Yo, you are watching Quest Combo, where we talk the culture because we are the culture. I'm Drew Soul Quest. And I'm Dev Devious. Yo, yo, what's going on, Dev? What's going on, man? Um, been feeling under the weather the past couple weeks. Um, it's not COVID. You you know, you can't even get sick no more. It's 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 <laughs> right. all it's just all COVID. No, I didn't have COVID. Um, you know, had some issues going on under the weather, but I'm I'm back in it and you know, I'm feeling good. So let's get into it. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, man. I uh you know, I be taking hella vitamins since since this whole COVID shit and jumped off nigga i'm the uh i try to be the healthiest nigga in the world i'll be taking all kinds of vitamins and supplements i've never took before <laughs> to build up my <laughs> make sure my immunity is on point <laughs> you you got to you got to health as well health as well if you ain't got that you ain't got nothing yeah yeah and and it's lightening up uh a little bit man they uh you know the mask mandate it's still around but it, it's lightening up it's like niggas don't care no more it's like niggas went from being scared to all right nigga what's up yeah, I'm about to. We finna make it happen. We finna. Hey, I got stuff I want to do. I've been waiting a year and a half now. Right. So Jesus you know, impatient. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very much so. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, we gonna get into it. So today's episode, we are talking about what makes a rap legend. Now, that's that's kind of been a hot topic the past few months. A lot of people have been discussing it. Um, it, it was kind of brought about because. I guess a lot of niggas that quote unquote um are not necessarily legends or at least the masses don't feel they legends they be just claiming that shit and saying it just like you can just say it and make it true. So everybody got their own list of who they feel is a legend, everybody got their own criteria um different things like that. So me and Dev we going to kind of, you know, kind of go over that, talk about who we feel are legends what the uh criteria is you know what what it really you know what it really means um because it's something that shouldn't be thrown around lightly to to be yeah. a legend in anything that's a fucking privilege that's a, right. a badge of honor so can't just any nigga just be like oh i'm a legend and you ain't you know what i mean and you, you haven't done legend, anything so. that yeah you haven't done anything exactly yeah exactly so we're gonna talk about that shit um so first let me uh, start it off before we even get into it. So this is what me and Dev came up with. Now, this is, uh, first of all, we're talking about what makes a rap legend. Um, let's go into the criteria. So I think this is a pretty standard criteria. It just really depends on, it really depends on the person that's coming up with it as well. Like me and Dev, we are hip hop kind of sewers. Um, we are true fans. We're very knowledgeable. Um, know the history of it. That that makes a huge difference as well. Because if you ain't that tuned in to the game, like how can you really make a, a sound decision or really make that claim if your ass ain't like tuned in? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think this is a pretty standard. You know what I'm saying? Number one, longevity impact popularity hit music and hip-hop culture impact now when i say like between the two i say like hit music and hip-hop culture impact like anybody can have a a, a quote-unquote hit in any genre of music especially rap music you can have a little hit you ride a wave or whatever the shit sound like Drake or Future or it's whatever is popping right now. Anybody can make a hit to sound like that, duplicate that shit and have a hit on their hands. But it's a difference between the hip hop culture impact. Did it really make an impact into the culture itself? You know what I'm saying? Do you, you what what do you think about that, Dale? I think that um, yeah, it's, that's a that's a perfect example. Um, because you if you make a hit, but it's only a hit within and, and I I'll take somebody like Bone Crusher, for instance, um, hmm. and never and never scared. Um, that was kind of just a, a hit of its time, you know. Now I have I have that song on my phone because you know I like to, you know, if I'm working out or if I'm you know at work or something like that, and I need to hype myself up. That's something I know I can play real quick, and I still enjoy it to this day. But most people probably don't feel like that 
you know, it didn't really, the, the only thing, the only really impact that it made is that it launched kind of launched T.I.'s career. I'll say that uh, as far as, you know, mainstream exposure and him being seen and him being taken seriously. Uh, okay. So, and it, you know, versus a hit that'll be remembered, you know, years down the line, so, you know, versus a, uh, I'll take Hard Knock Life, for example, with Jay-Z. Um, that was kind of like a turning point for him and his career as well as the rap game in general so you know there's different levels to hits and as far as anything goes is it something that you know it can make you a quick million dollars or is it something that's going to establish you in whatever genre of music you're doing to keep you going forward for you know years to come right for sure yeah that makes sense okay so before we get into it i'm just gonna read off so when you're in the dictionary and you look up the actual definition of what a legend is, it kind of changes things. Like it, it even changes th changed things for me. Like basically what I thought and my list and shit, it really changed things. So you look up the, the definition of legend. It says an extremely famous or notorious person, especially in a particular field. So, you know, they got multiple definitions, but that's the first right. one. An extremely famous or notorious person, especially in a particular field. Uh, it says, uh, remarkable enough to be famous, very well known. So, you know, when I seen that shit, <laughs> I'm it like, kind of, it, it does change things. Yeah. And it almost seems like it kind of, yeah. Yeah, because I'm like, okay, if that's the case, y'all y'all base that definition like a lot on just being known and being famous. Shit. Right. I mean, that's it's that's all celebrities is. Legends. Yeah, oh, it's like if you get out, well, I'm just saying from that definition, especially the first one, that it's almost like just to be on in the rap game alone just make you a legend because people <laughs> right. know who you are just because people know who you are. So that yeah. kind of and that and that kind of waters it down a little bit, just like what you were saying in the beginning. And I actually want to go back to that um, because it is loosely thrown around in, in my generation. And I'm only 30. So my generation and people younger than me, um, it's almost like I was actually old enough to kind of see the shift in the rap game as far as um, how it's consumed and how people listen to it and how you know we when i was growing up you know music videos and things were still a popular marketing tool like vi music videos are still what they are today and still popular and everything but you know a lot of people a lot of kids that's younger than me they don't know about 106 and park they don't know about rap city the basement you know just how different the game was before it almost i don't even i don't know if it's the right w way to say it but like before rap kind of got super commercialized Mm -hmm. they didn't they didn't really get to see the the griminess aspect of it when people kind of was you know all rap you know whatever you know it's not before rap was just in all the commercials all the doritos commercials and all the uh mountain dew commercials when people was pushing rap you know cardi b is all over the commercials and you know uh amigos and all, you know the p rappers and all that they wasn't doing all that necessarily back in the day you saw it every now and again because you're like oh that's oh that's you know so and so but now it seemed like every rapper got a wendy's commercial every rapper got a this that endorsement behind it like they wouldn't it wasn't no endorsement deals and things like that so as far as the commercialization of rap you know it's almost like they didn't really get to see rap and everything pre-internet mm -hmm. and that's kind of like a different space that they don't talk about and you know if they don't really have a uh, knowledge or a uh, hunger to want to go back and see how things were beforehand they they're not going to have like you said a ton of knowledge or a ton of different things to go off of because they're they're so focused on the moment now and how they can and it's just and that's just a part of society anyway you know we were kind of just in the moment in the moment in the moment you know i don't want to why would i want to listen to a, a album from 1997 what, what does that do for me now in 2022 you know which that's your opinion how you feel about that but you you can't just ex act like you know rap didn't just come from nowhere you know 
So it came from somewhere and it has a it has a history of it behind it. And that's any industry, that's any um, background, whatever you want to call it, where it had to be built up to a certain point for it to be what we know it as today. So when they come up with legends, they're going to, like I say, in the moment, they're going to talk about anybody from the last five to 10 years that they grew up listening to or anything like that. So it kind of does water it down. Yeah. Yeah, it do. It makes a difference. Um, so that's that. So after I read that definition, I was just like, yeah, so that's, yeah, we really gonna have to come up with our own criteria, our own definition and who we think. So pretty much with me, uh, obviously it's the, you know, the standard people that are going to be on most people's list. And when I say that, yeah, you know, everybody going to say Tupac. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a given, which rightfully so. Um, I mean, the man put in the time. Definitely. He covers all the criteria, made the impact, had his longevity. Um, I mean, left a mark on the game forever. Like he, at the end of the day, a lot of people would say he's one of the most uh, influential rappers of all time. You know what I mean? To and, and what? In what? Like a period of what? Six or seven years from uh, what? 90 to 96 when he died? Yeah. That's incredible. I, yeah, everything, he was, everything he did in a six year span, that's incredible. It is. It is. And, and, I'm, and, you know, a lot of people try to downplay that, but I'm just like, no, you... You can't downplay it because I mean, literally think about what he did. He had five albums. Like what he did, he did four, five, six, seven movies. You know, as well as you know, uh, all legendary features with all kinds of different people uh, from different parts of the country. It, yeah, I don't. You, you, that's that's incredible. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, it it, it goes back to. The point which you were saying earlier, how the younger generation, they don't want to go back and research nothing, get get information about nothing. They don't want to go back to the foundation of hip hop or rap and anything like that, because they're just so it's they have access to so much information. Everything is microwave. Everything is instant should be hot for five minutes. And it's like you have to look at. Like you said, with Pac, in six years, what he did, he left a lifelong impact. And this is before the Internet, mm -hmm. where he wasn't in nobody's face every five minutes. You didn't have access to your fans like that every five minutes. Uh, people actually had when you go on platinum, that's going to be a whole nother episode. When you go platinum, it really means you go on platinum. A million people had to walk through the doors of record stores all over the world and buy your shit. It wasn't this streaming shit where they can fuck with the numbers, dilute the numbers, <laughs> uh, fuck around. N niggas, when you, when you really look at it and it really boiled down to it, that's I, I want to research that. When the last time a nigga really went platinum, like for real? I was, and if, if, and before you even researched that, and I could be wrong. I don't want to just say, oh, I'm definitive, but I would say probably, probably little, uh, Wayne Carter three, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe. What about that? Drake, was like though. Drake two, maybe. N motherfuckers love Drake, didn't he do the numbers? I give him that. He do numbers, but you know, he also is, uh, what top five streaming, uh, hip hop slash artist, period. Yeah. So if you getting billions of streams, you know them. If they they count your streams to, for you to go platinum, I think that is super super corny. Yeah. And it waters and it waters it down. So you know, just because I listen to Drake all day every day and I, and I go platinum off of that versus like what you just said, a, a literal physical million human beings went to Best Buy or went to Circuit City or wherever music was sold at and bought it. Right. And pay and pay their ten dollars or their fifteen dollars. Like I want this album. It's not the same. No, at all. No, definitely not at all. And and, and see you you talking about on the lower end with your experience with CDs, nigga. When CDs first came out, 
uh how about a, a 22 22.99 23.99 Motherfuckers was <laughs> shit. They was going platinum because shit. Ah, yeah. right. Mm. And, and, and that's and, and that's ain't even no more. Motherfucker out there right now to pay no twenty three dollars for no music right now. No, no. <laughs> but the, and that and that just going to and that just go more into the you know that should be a whole another segment as far as you know that don't even sound right when you just when you say that twenty two ninety nine and then these niggas still broke. So wait yeah. a minute. So I go. So I go. I sell a million records at twenty two ninety nine. That's 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 buku. That's a lot of money. Where's where it's all going? That yeah. don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? So that that can be a, that. You know we can get into that uh, another time. But yeah, just uh, the, the the way the market evolved and how everything changes. It's just nothing is the same at all. Uh, and and even from my limited experience. Yeah, like you say, I I didn't even know that you know albums was out costing twenty two ninety nine or something like that. And is this what is this tapes? Are these tapes? Is this vinyl? No, no, this was a CD. CD. Yeah. Well, that that makes CD's sense. See, that that makes sense because that was that that was the new technology. So that now right. that you say that 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 makes sense. Right. That does make sense. Look at it like Blu rays. When Blu rays first yeah. hit. The motherfuckers are expensive. How much you can get it for a Blu-ray for now? I like, just I got a I got a whole bunch of Blu-rays in the mail now. They all range from three ninety nine to to twenty, right? Depending on what you, depending on what you're getting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, as far as you know, the obvious people that are legends, like I say, you got your Tupac. You gonna throw Kendrick in there? Kanye, Wayne, Fifty, Drake. Q and I'm just going like down the line as far as the undeniable like yeah. the ones everybody pretty much agree on. You know what I mean? The masses right. agree on these people. Exactly. Q, Snoop, uh Andre 3000, DMX, um Easy E. Now, it's a couple people you know and, and and rightfully so. Like all of those people, they cover the criteria they got the longevity, they got the hits, they got the impact. It's undeniable. Like, even if you don't like them or don't fuck with them or don't like their music, you cannot deny that they cover all the bases of the criteria. Like, they fucking legends. If you just right. say they ain't a legend, you just talking shit, just hating to be hating. They, they fucking hating legends, bro. Like, for real. Yeah, facts. Um, Now, uh, so I mean, would you would you pretty much agree with that? Uh, with those people, yeah. I just name is yeah, of course. That, that okay. is no question, no okay. question. All right. So now I kind of want to get more into, and I'll start with you. Like outside of this list, you know, this is the the common list that pretty most people are going to agree on. Uh, who would you put up there as a legend that may not be your most popular choice or the Agree. All the masses are going to agree. Uh, off the top, uh, Busta Rhymes. Okay, uh, my favorite, my favorite rapper, Busta Rhymes. You, you gotta, you gotta put him on there. Um, yeah. I would say, I would say LL, just because it's to the point now. You, you know, he kind of. I feel like he would get lost in the shuffle. You wouldn't even really necessarily know that he's uh you know, you wouldn't. I mean, you know that he's a legend, but you know he's been acting for so long that you kind of almost forget that he did all these things. So, where me and you, without question, automatically can know like, oh, LL. But if you was to ask any other person, you, I think he would slip most people's minds when you think yeah. about a legend. You know, yeah. he they, they're more likely to bring up Nas or Jay Z or any. If you want to go to his era, they they're probably more likely to say, you know, maybe like a KRS One. Or um, maybe who else from that era could they really say? Well, that's the thing that it's almost like we got into the point where that that you know that kind of era, that beginning era, mm -hmm. the New York boom bap kind of era, like that's kind of being forgotten about. Like now that I think about it, yeah, because I, I you know, and I and I don't think that's right because you you know that's like the. That's like the the Ray Charles kind of Little Richard era for you know soul music and everything like that. You got to have those people, 
to right. get to where we are now. Um, yeah. But A Ball MJG are definitely Southern legends. Mm. Um, yeah. You wouldn't even, you know, uh, I don't think enough people talk about them. Devin the dude is a legend. Mm. You know, um, he's a now legend. That's but a, that's a real, that's a good one. I agree with you on that. But yeah. you know, that's a real debatable one because that's a real debatable that name one. Up yeah. In a lot of circles, motherfuckers like who? Like who? Right, exactly. But then you got you got like E forty. Um, mm. you got pe- you got people like Too Short. Um, I will put Master P in there. Mm. Um. You know, you you got you got a lot, and, and that's the thing. You got so many people like that, where you know, just because they're not at the highest highest level, they you know they can't be considered for you know legendary status. But you know, different things that they do make you a legend. You know, uh, for instance, you know, Master P is a legend simply because he didn't lived uh, every every nigga's fantasy in in five different ways. <laughs> right you know he's been, been he he's been the ceo he's been the nba player he's been the the superstar rapper he's been the actor he's you know and i'm just like every what nigga don't want to be one of them things what nigga didn't grow up wanting to be something and he was able to do all of it in right. one in one lifetime you know that you know niggas don't go to the nba and is a platinum rapper and a ceo of a multi-million dollar uh record label with other other niggas under him selling millions of records and right. you know you know and then acting in your own movies or you know n- niggas don't do that not on one like you got to pick one you got to get one right. lane right to be in so and, you know and the nigga still going with it, it ain't yeah, like master p is i don't even think master p 50 yet nigga still going you know what right I mean? and yeah. that's it now that now that you say that 50 do you would would you say 50 cent is a legend at this point uh see it's kind of hard. So, I, I, I think mean, it's debatable it, to me I, it's debatable so, it's debatable because so so when i come up with because i'm gonna go over mine too like obviously we went over the the masses list that most people are going to agree these are legends but when i get to my list of who i feel may not be on the everybody's list as legends my I guess I'm torn because I'm like, do I stick strictly to the music and what they did music wise, or do I group in collectively everything they've done and all their accomplishments? You know what I mean? Right. That, that's where I'm kind of torn at because I be wanting to group in all they shit because like you, for example, like you say 50, yeah, he he kind of is because once again, like his, like we go over the list of the criteria. Impact, okay, maybe for maybe one of the other criteria he might be at a sixty-five percent, but mm-hmm. impact his shit is at two hundred all the way, all the way. So we're back. Like I mean, the dude just man. I think I think. Um... Like I said, it's debatable, but I'm leaning more, like you said, more towards yes on the 50 side, yeah. just because, you know, that that day de- that damn debut album, it was just like it. I still to this day, outside of what maybe Eminem, who's definitely a legend, by the way. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. Like I still remember like the hype behind that and the. And the press behind that, and then just the nigga's story on how he marketed him getting shot to to you know, <laughs> and I mean, but I'm serious though. But just like how he, you know, used that to market, he, like he he from the beginning his marketability and his his ability to market himself and market anything is kind of like unmatched for for the most part as far as rap is concerned or rappers. Because you know he the way he was able to parlay, yeah, nigga, I did get shot nine times, and I'm still talking this thug stuff. You know, he revitalized that because you know after Tupac and Biggie died, niggas like, oh, let, let's maybe calm down on the, on the shoot and talk. Let's just party it up and drink. Mm-hmm. You know, he said, no, nigga, I got shot nine times. This is still happening out here in these streets, <laughs> and you gonna hear about it. Right. I'm gonna tell you, and 
you gonna buy my album too and what it, you know and he's like i'm i'm beefing with everybody you suck you suck f you whatever i don't care about you what you gonna do you know he just he just came in the game real bully like and it, and you know it was uh, it was kind of unquestioned like nobody really challenged him you know it's still to this day you know you got you know people that he was into it with you know that who was around him and, and it's always gonna be people who got bad stuff to say about anybody but you know ain't nobody came out and say nigga you didn't really get shot nine times you ain't really been he ain't ain't nobody really came out and tried to expose him or or say anything like that which is another hallmark of a legend your, your words ring true you standing on what you saying and can't nobody take nothing away from you so um yeah I, I think i like you said i think uh when you look at certain aspects maybe he ain't he's not a legend because he he had that next album that was a force and then it kind of dropped off from there so that kind of is like eh. but then if you look at the impact of what his first album and his second album what he was able to parlay that into doing you know it, it's kind of like yeah i mean he, he might have to be you know yeah. but at the same time it depends on who you're talking to yeah yeah um and i and i would agree i would probably have to just go on and throw 50 in because like i said his impact and then what he did just like you said from the, from the gate with the marketing what he's done as a businessman um uh, the nigga then took over a full network just with power a premium with cable power. premium cable network yeah yeah what he's doing with power is just amazing like i mean it's literally for real like the power universe this nigga got like i don't even know how many it is of it yeah he didn't he didn't he didn't he didn't made a street mcu basically yeah that nigga is like the that's what i be called that nigga is like the the hood tyler perry He's yeah pretty much doing <laughs> Yeah, you know, except Tyler Perry was doing the, the you know, more so with the movies. He ain't really take over television, but in his yeah. own right, that's what he's doing. He's just doing the the hood version of it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely agree with that. Um, I just feel like I I think that you have to, to a certain degree, you kind of have to take into totality what you know people do. Like, like I, you know, we had this conversation off stream about Snoop yeah. and would Snoop be the legend that he is if he didn't have the acting career slash pop culture aspect to his career. And, you know, I definitely don't think that he would be. I think that without, you know, everything that he's doing pop culture wise and without the acting, he would be a legend still but it wouldn't be nowhere near the same degree i don't believe see and and i i disagree with that and, and you know why because so like you said you you never really saw uh an impact like how 50 when he when 50 first came just the the, the everything that led up to the album the way he marketed itself the i've been shot nine times um even before uh you know get rich or die trying the nigga had the, like the single uh what was it like how to rob or whatever oh uh, yeah you know what yeah. i mean so, so pissed like, the like industry off marketing pissed, pissed the industry off with that one yeah i read yeah. when i read the story behind that and how <laughs> niggas were, like this nigga got jay-z to respond on a major album to to you and, and you still an underground not even known you ain't on yet or you got the the lower end record deal yeah that that's big business right there yes yeah for sure so i and i and i do remember that even though like i wasn't on right away with 50 i do remember the feeling and the impact that he had because niggas was just like man who was this nigga? everybody was on 50 like everybody they was like oh my god so i'm gonna go back and it was that same impact when snoop came out man niggas like that was it when he came out with doggy style and all that shit, yeah motherfuckers was loving loving it i, I bet oh yeah i, I already know loving it bro like, I, I already know i can only imagine i can only like, imagine yeah like almost and like it, loving it like if that nigga ne never came out with no more music like that's enough. We, I mean, they was loving that shit, bro. Yeah. White but people, and that's white and that's people. what I'm saying, and that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why I believe 
Yeah, he he would most definitely be a legend, but uh, it, even with that, but I just think that you know, it's the it's the pop culture, it's the acting, and that was he was able to cross over with white folks and yeah. and, uh, and and other people besides just it's to the point where here's what I mean by by when I say he he wouldn't he would still be a legend, but not to the same degree. Mm. I feel like white people can now r- recognize his legend status. Yeah. Versus just us mm-hmm. or people who listen to rap. You I feel like you can get a sense, you know, just how he's able to carry himself and how he's able to do certain things and how he's able to, you know, do the things that he does and associate with the people that he associate with. You know, I think a white person would look at Snoop and say, well, he has to be somebody if he's able to just, you know, you know, hang around Martha Stewart all the time. Or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Like you you have to you have to have done something or have to you can't just be a nobody and just <laughs> be up sitting next to and have a show with Martha Stewart or whatever the case may be. So, so that's that's what I mean by that. That's all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But Snoop I, is uh and I love it because he's just transcended all races, all like at the end of the day, I've heard many people say that, and I kind of agree. They was like, Snoop is on a level now where, at the end of the day, he's like almost the, like the most famous rapper. Right. Like, period. Like, your grandmama's grandmama gonna know who the yeah, fuck yeah. Snoop is. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I love it. Yeah. He's done this being his self. Self. Nigga, yeah. I'm still- Ain't had to switch up, ain't had to I do nothing. I still talk that gang bang shit, nigga. I'm still cripping. I, I'm still smoking the shit out of weed. I might walk yeah. in with a motherfucking blunt and what, nigga? This is me. What you gonna do? Right. <laughs> I'm Snoop, nigga. Hey, y'all love me. Now, I want to take it a different direction. Um, you know, because I and I want to see how you feel about it. Mm-hmm. Because, like I said, there are different legends. So, in the what about in the terms of street legends? Mm-hmm. Like, you might not, you might not necessarily be, uh, the prototypical legend mm. but in the streets though okay n- niggas love you niggas know who you are n- right. you know even all the way from you know me and you know you know we have a, a understanding of the other game to your most ignorant ignorant whoever person that know like somebody like gucci right. i would say without a doubt <laughs> oh my lord i don't even know if you understand drew because I was in it. I lived it. I was there. This nigga Gucci, yeah, is a street legend. Yeah. Without a doubt. Like, if you I, and I don't even know that might have to have its <laughs> that might have to have its own separate criteria. You yeah. Know, you might have had to uh a, a, a minimum of three years in jail. <laughs> yeah, minimum of like three hundred uh, th- uh three years in jail then shot niggas whatever you want to call it yeah but but yeah i'm i would say without a doubt you have your your street legends that you know and there i think that there's different people who kind of they go into they they have that traditional legend status and you got the street legend status okay. type deal you know that's, you kind of can dibble dabble in both that's uh that's a good breakdown um now that you say that that is a, a good uh category because it is certain people that are looked at like that where they're not gonna be on that on that masses list with the Tupacs and the Snoops and the Wu Tang, you know what I mean? Right. But street legends, especially it holds more of a ground because once again, the nature of hip hop, it comes from the streets, you know what I mean? Right. So exactly. that does hold a place dear in a lot of niggas' hearts, like. For example, when you say streets le- street legends, I think of, you know, you might have went to jail, may not, may shot some niggas, but when I think of that, it's niggas like, okay, like Mac Maul. Mac mm-hmm. Maul, you've heard me mention him. You said you talked to me about him. Now, uh, he, to me, he has at least like two classic albums. A lot of motherfuckers don't even know who he is, but to me, he got at least like two classic albums. He's had multiple songs, multiple projects and all that. But the street part of it, he was rapping about the game. But then I told you that shit, the Rumper Room game. 
it was mm-hmm. him and his people um shit mac dre was involved in that uh, r.i.p to mac dre them niggas was real street niggas i told you they was robbing banks robbing banks robbing pizza parlors right that they, they, they out here nigga they was on the news like yeah in vallejo california that like that's Making that real documented shit that ain't no none of the fake shit that these niggas do today motherfuckers uh get into the music game and get famous and then be talking about some gang banging shit and be trying to do all this gangster shit nigga you what are you doing you going back i'm nigga studio studio gangster right so niggas like mac mall uh when i think street legends niggas like mac mall niggas like uh spice one spice one was hard on that gangster shit like (laughs) for real Mm -hmm. uh spice one uh i'm even take it back to the crib uh, Chicago land area. Um, think of like Do or Die. When mm-hmm. Do or Die first came out, oh my God, that's another one. Man, that shit was everything. Niggas loved it. Everybody was bumping that shit. Uh, I think a niggas like Sebo. Uh, he's another one uh, from California. The dude has. He was he was currency before currency. If you look up Sebo's mm. catalog, no exaggeration, the nigga probably got like 30, 40 albums. Like, <laughs> damn. Not, not okay. even exaggerating, like real shit. And, and yeah, it, it's somewhere in that ballpark. So, okay. Yeah, okay. It, it, that is a, yeah, that, that damn near do need to be a whole nother. Yeah, because, uh, <laughs> you know, because like I say, there there's different criteria because it's, it's, there's no love like hood love. Yeah, when the hood love when the hood love you, they love you forever. Unless you just like betray them and snitch or something. Yeah, they gonna love they gonna love you forever. Yeah. You know, it's just certain things like you know, uh, Jeezy, street legend, definitely yeah. a street legend. I wouldn't consider him an overall legend, but I would consider him a legend in the streets. Yeah, um, and there's a lot of guys that that can go for. You can say that about, uh, you can say that about Dolph. R.I.P. Mm. to Dolph. Um, you can say that about Gotti. You can say that about um I'm I'm torn on T.I. I because I feel like you know, I feel like he's there, but I feel like at the same time he also crossed over and kind of you know was like, Yeah, he kind of did what you're supposed to do, which is lead that that lead that behind you and right. and stop dealing with all that. Um he he, you know, but he he meets some of the criteria. So depending on who you talk to, Ti may or may not be on that list. Mm-hmm. Um, but I yeah, definitely think that that's that's a whole nother separate category that should be mentioned is worthy of being mentioned because, like you say, hip hop is from the streets, and the streets is a big reason why hip hop is what it is and where and where it got to. You know how it got to where it's at today. Yeah, because oh, you yeah, know where yeah. where do where do most rappers come from? The streets. So, oh, 100 percent, right? So that so it it, it definitely uh it definitely matters. It, it needs its own category of itself. I mean, because like you said, because rap is from the streets. Like I know a lot of niggas that that's all the kind of music they would even listen to. Listen to like right. like as much as like, we love like Busta, um. M and people like that, a lot of motherfuckers wouldn't even respect hear that the artist or listen to it if it didn't have that street aspect to it and that and that street cred, so to speak. You know, what and I mean? after and I and I understand that I do understand that to a certain degree, but I'm just like, nigga, you you so limp, you limiting yourself. Yeah, you know, it's just, and- it's so much more out here <laughs> than just that. But but at the same time, you you know, you can't relate to it. You know, right. you can't relate to that because, you know, the same way I probably, you know, I love movies for the most part in all different kinds of movies, different, you know, drama, comedy, uh, right. horror, whatever. But I might not be able to get with the silent black and white. What is this shit? They ain't even saying nothing. <laughs> right. What's You know, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, I just watched Star Wars, Star Wars, the very first one, A New Hope. For, uh what two three months ago for the first time i never Wait, saw which one now the very first star wars are you uh, talking about from way 19- back from the 80s yeah 1977 yes oh i had never seen it because i uh-huh. saw the little the little prequel trilogy you know 
Phantom Menace and all them, but I never saw none of the originals. And I finally got to go see the original. And I was looking, I'm just like, this is this is the groundbreaking shit y'all was talking about. Like it was a good movie, <laughs> but I'm looking at it, but but see, I was looking at it through a 2021 lens when yeah. I watched it last year. I was looking at it from a 2021 lens instead of a 1977 lens. Okay. Where and I look and I had to recognize I had the self-awareness to recognize, you know what? I, maybe in 1977, it was the shit and it was groundbreaking. And oh my God, what the hell is this? I ain't never seen nothing like this before right. versus seeing it for the first time ever in 2021. And you're just like, nigga, what they, damn, that's it. That's kind of how I, I left. Yeah. It was a good movie, but I was like, damn, that's it. I was expecting more. The way that, the, the way that people was just, oh my God, Star Wars and the way people nerd out for star wars and just how people dress up like it and all this other stuff i'm just like damn i really thought it would be more than that right so and and, and it just depends too um so i'm gonna say those are two so with star wars i'm not the biggest star wars fan like i don't even i'm trying to see like as far as like the newer ones i don't know if i've how many of those either. i've actually even seen but the right. simple fact I'm going to say that the very first Star Wars and then the Empire Strikes Back right now in my mind, without me seeing the other ones, I'm going to say those are the two best Star Wars ever because it got a nostalgia piece stuck to me. You know what I'm saying? Stuck to yeah. it for me. You know what I mean? Like, right. obviously, you know, 77. Yeah, that was, way, you know, way before me. So I, I, st I still saw that one and empire strikes back after the fact but when i saw it i was still a kid so it right. still has a you know that nostalgia thing for me i haven't even really yeah, seen this is it's the place but in your like heart you said, the effects and uh the special effects and technology yeah of course it wasn't compared to now shit. yeah so yeah that, that's definitely you know something that you got to take into consideration, you know, they just can't. That's not something that they can vibe with. That's not something that they don't know nothing else but the street hard gangster shit, you know, because that's yeah. all they really involve themselves in, you know, involve themselves in or is around or dealing with is hard street gangster niggas in hard gangster situations. So, you know, right. it is what it is. It is what yeah. it is. But and, hey, and, well, real quick, oh, I was going to say, uh, I need to take a bathroom break real, real quick. Oh, okay. That's yeah, cool. just take a bathroom break real quick and I'll be right right back. So okay. let's, let's take let's take five real quick. We can okay. edit that out, right? Obviously, right? Uh actually, no, go on and take your your bathroom break. I'm gonna uh talk about uh some other shit that's going on with culture 73 while you do that. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah, we, cool. we keep it real over here at Quest Combo. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm I'm you know, I'm not this nigga gotta yeah. go to the bathroom. Everybody gotta go you to know, the bathroom. Yeah, I'm 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 sorry, I'm I'm human, you know. I know <laughs> I know I know if you if you on TV or if you on the internet, you gotta be a robot or something, but no, I'm we're we human still over here at Culture 73, you know. Right, exactly. So I'll yeah, I'll be right back, people. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, so while my man Dev is uh taking his bathroom break. Uh, we'll talk just a little bit more uh, about Culture 73. Uh, first of all, everybody that is listening, everybody that is watching, uh, we love y'all. We appreciate the support. Um, We're going to keep coming with it. Um, Culture 73, the network, uh, you know, check out the social medias. Obviously, we on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube is uh, Culture 73 or Culture 73 TV on youtube if you are watching us on youtube um definitely please make sure you uh share make sure you subscribe make sure you hit that notification bell so you can stay in tune when we drop all this dope shit. um but as far as the content uh quest convo that's me and deb devious we're gonna be dropping every friday um outside of that uh i'll also be doing new music reviews uh every friday you know i'm gonna pick you know obviously a project that's dope that you know it's kind of been anticipated and you know give my two cents on it uh outside of that we will also be having another segment and it's called flavor culture now flavor culture is um on the other end of things um 
you know, we all love food, hip hop fans and everybody else. We love food. <laughs> So we gonna talk about food now. Now that flavor coach is gonna be a TikTok series. Uh, it's pretty much gonna be we're covering um, black owned restaurants um, from the small um, little eateries to the larger uh, restaurants, but they're all gonna be black owned. We start in the Chicago land area because that's where we are based. So we got a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's been a while. It's been a lot of ups and downs with, uh, you know, just uh, with myself, with the brand. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It's life. Um, but it's been a lot of shit going on. Like I've said before, it's been health issues, money issues. It's been ups and downs with uh, COVID. Um, man, just to keep it real, when 2020 came, uh, I'm thinking that's going to be like the apex of the brand. We had shit lined up. We had shit planned, all kind of events and venues and shit. We was doing a whole bunch of shit. And obviously, uh, we know in March of 2020, April, uh, the motherfucking world changed and shut down. So that shitted on everything and changed everything. And a motherfucker had to regroup. And at the same time, a nigga dealing with uh i got hit with reality and i'm the creator i'm the captain of the ship in this motherfucker and i went down and it was just it was just a fucking what i say a, a domino effect from there but the main thing is like the ghetto boys first album we can't be stopped i can't be stopped and it's 2022 and we in this bitch stronger than ever and we gonna keep moving and we appreciate all the love and all the support um like i've said before it's not a lot of black owned media outlets uh so hey we appreciate all the support um another thing we got going on y'all probably see the ticker at the bottom dopest hip-hop tees uh that is my uh that's my tea and hoodie brand um you're gonna see me wearing it all the time I'm actually wearing one of the ones now. This is the, see if y'all can see it up close. Uh, but just matter of fact, fuck if you can't see it, go to dopesthiphoptees.com. Check it out. Um, I guarantee it's something on there that you're going to feel. Uh, Dopest Hip Hop Tees, obviously there for hip hop fans, hip hop heads. Um, but one of the differences, again, they are for hip hop heads and hip hop fans and they're created by hip-hop heads y'all know a lot of the shit we consume a lot of the shit we buy a lot of the shit we uh are sold are not made by people of the culture they are made by the vultures that know we love this shit and they take all our dollars um so why not give it to a a reputable black brand that knows you love you from the culture hey why not um but anyway this is the the one i got on is the super friends uh super friends edition so super friends no y'all can't see i have to get real <laughs> um but y'all probably can see some of it but what it is so it's a play on like the uh superhero thing um the superhero theme as far as the super friends, I know Superman and all that shit. Except these are the super friends uh, of hip hop. We were talking about legends today. These are the true legends. Like we wouldn't have this conversation when none of these niggas that we talking about be here if it wasn't for these niggas on this shirt. This is cool. Herc, Grandmaster Flash, Legend. Legend. You know, these are the ones that created this game. Um, they are pioneers in uh, hip hop. Uh, yeah, Africa Bambada. Yeah, so that's 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 who these is. So y'all go I, and support that. I think it'd be safe to say pretty much all the all the the uh beginning pioneer, they're they're just automatically legends because they created this. Oh just yeah, definitely. Offer. So that, yeah, I, 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 I knew that. I just wanted to confirm it with you. Oh yeah, that that's what I was just talking about. I was telling everybody uh, about the dopest hip hop tees, the you know the tea and hoodie brand and everything. I was talking about the one I got on, and that's what it is. The Super Friends, these are the 
pioneers, the super friends, the superheroes of hip hop, the creators of the shit, the Grandmaster Flash, the cool Herg, Bambada, you know what I mean? So definitely yeah, check out, I'm, definitely check out the merch, man. Um, I, I looked through the merch myself. Um, we, you know, we, this is something that, uh, Soul Quest put a lot of work and a lot of time and effort into, um, and he hand selected all these designs. Um, I've looked at them. You didn't make sure you check out the site. They all are quality. They are all, you know, something that you can represent not only us, but you can represent how you feel about the culture, how you feel about hip hop. And they are all something that, you know, I believe if, if you truly love hip hop, like you say you do, if you're watching this, then it, it, we got something for everybody. No matter, sure, you know, sure. no matter uh, what your what your preference is, your style, how you how you present yourself, you you don't you gonna find something you like. So definitely check out a uh, dope hip hop tees. Exactly. Yeah, you hit it right on the head, bro. Just just the same with Culture Seventy Three, the brand. Everything is about balance. It's the same with the tees. Like you said, it's about balance. If you are a hip hop head and and love the legendary aspect of it, we got shit for you. If you a motherfucker that hey, all you fuck with is future and uh Kendrick and niggas like that, I still I got shit for you. So yeah, definitely you hit it on the head. Um, but to 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 wrap it up a little bit, I know we was getting we was getting deep into the street legend uh aspect. Yeah. I'ma say this too. So I think another reason why the street legend is so impactful because I'm gonna say this like when you riding especially like with with me you know my generation we was the ones that was you know it kind of came it kind of came from the west coast you know with the cars and niggas having to bump in the car with all the speakers and all that shit mm -hmm. it kind of came from the west coast i'll say to a certain extent but once again i really was kinda, i never i would i, I would have never thought that it kind of it kind of did. I, I could be wrong, but I I, I think so. Well, I think well so. not even not even not even that. I, it's not even to uh, and and for and for everybody listening, you know, I'm always learning something new. You know, I don't I don't have nearly the experience or uh, knowledge that Soul Quest has, but he's taught me a lot, and I'm still learning. So I'm never gonna present myself like I'm some, you know whatever you want to call it <laughs> you know i'm always learning so it's this is you know beautiful experience for me because with the 12s and 15s and everything like that that's something i always associated with the south like i always thought that the the south was the ones who came with the the bump in the truck because they I, they was the ones i heard talk about it the most even okay. the, like you said the, like the older generation like a ugk okay. or uh you know anybody that was down south in texas that or in you know alabama anything like that ugk uh to a certain extent three six they all was talking about the sound the bump in the right. trunk and you I've, I've heard outcast big boy speak on the bump in the trunk so right. i've always thought that that was something that came from out south and then for you to say out west i'm like that's something I might have to, you know, I want to look into and see the history behind that. Is that, you know, where, you know, is that something that they, you know, were really into like that? Yeah. Anything. Because, and, and then just for it to spread throughout the country, you got, because you got anybody in any part of the country where it's niggas that they, they bumping. Right. They, they all want systems or if, if nothing else, they turn and they, they, they factory uh, shit up as high as it's going to go. So right. the bump is everywhere. Right. So, but you know, to to you know, hear what you said, that that yeah, that kind of so, blew me so back. That's like, another wait, what? segment we would probably do too. Get into that because that's a culture within itself as well. Um, obviously, it comes from the hip hop culture, but so this I I I, I want to say it came from the west, and then kind of trickled on in to the south, and then it kind of went to the to the Midwest because. I, I do recall earlier the West kind of talking about it first. And then and you know what? Yeah. You know, oh, I was going to say, you know what? I just thought about it because um, I just watched Men's Society uh, not too oh, long ago. Yeah. And I remember 
came when he jacked that nigga at the at the burgers, and he said, "I'll take your speaker too. I'll take your stereo." He said, "And I want the stereo." I was yeah. like, "Oh, so that and that was nine with ninety two, ninety three. So I was, okay, all right. So right, okay, yeah, it, yeah. It, it 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 all it always come together. Yeah, but that's a, that's a good one to uh to research. But but what I was getting to with the the street legend aspect of it, so personally myself and i know a lot of niggas that feel like this when you in the car when when you rolling i prefer the shit with that knock and i prefer the street shit i want to hear this nigga talking about how he yeah, how he's smoking a blunt. He shot these niggas. And I, that's the <laughs> shit I want to hear. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know, I no, want to hear it, that yeah. ghetto shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it, it's crazy. So who was talking about that? Uh, it was somebody on Drink Champs, and they was talking about that. Uh, damn, who was saying that? I can't remember who it was, but they was even saying that. They was talking about, like, Wu-Tang. And they mm -hmm. was like, so Wu Tang, I appreciated that later because I could not bump Wu Tang. I couldn't bump that shit in the car. They didn't have the same sounds and bass. You know how Wu Tang shit is. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? It, it's not, you know, Wu Tang is house music to me. That that's in the house. You're not really riding around bumping Wu Tang. Like the only Wu Tang shit that I recall bumping and really had that knock was Method Man's album to Cal. Now that no shit problem. has some, I'm talking about some serious earth in that shit. Like right, yeah. Now, now, see, with me, I'm a I'm a different kind of guy um, mm -hmm. as far as that. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all about I'm all about the shooting shooting guns and selling dope in my head. I'm all about that all day, every day in the car. <laughs> and you know, yeah. I'm gonna no, listen because I'm I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna turn it up. And I'm you can't tell me I ain't moving weight and I ain't right, selling exactly weight. and the police looking for me. Okay, <laughs> you're not gonna tell me that the police I'm 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 really looking in the rear view mirror like these niggas, where these niggas at, bro? They they got they right. I can't <laughs> I can't get caught slipping, you right. know what I'm saying? So, but at the same time, um I have I'm selective because you know, yeah, there are some things you can't really just be just riding with your window like. I'm not gonna be riding in the hood playing Eminem, just bumping Thank through the car. You. You're not. You know. Now, if I got the windows up and I'm just shuffling my music and Eminem, come on. <laughs> go, yeah, go ahead, spit that shit, M. Yeah, I'm with you. Right. Let's go. Let's go. But if I'm if it's summertime and it's and it's 87, and I'm riding through the hood on my way to the picnic or something, whatever. They cook out stand in the hood. Yeah, I, I they like nigga. I'm not. Nobody's doing that. No, you know. But I will. But I will. Depending on uh, what it is, I might. I might let the Nas play. You know, yeah. depending. You yeah. know, I, or I might let the the the. I might let loot. I might. I'm gonna let Luda play. You know, what I'm saying. I'm gonna let Outkast Luda, play. He's you an know. exception to the rule. Luda had that knock. Like yeah, Luda yeah. Had that yeah yeah but you see but that's the thing though with our generation i told you we real and it's real frustrating for me like if i was to play um uh, chicken and beer or something around my guys you know they gonna be like damn bro you ain't got nothing like newer you can play or something and i'm like or mm -hmm. you 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 like you you got something else you can play and i'm just like nigga mm -hmm. what it's it's luda and they're like, yeah, but that shit. Oh, I'm like, and, and, what? Mm, what do you mean? Mm, mm. I'm and I'm and I was like, what is this whole thing with? We gotta, we gotta leave shit in the past. Like, oh, it came out in 04, so let's leave it there. No, who's doing yeah. that? No, I don't, yeah. I don't believe in that. That that's kind of that's kind of trash to me. And that defeats the whole purpose of having history, right? And having it, can you just imagine human history if we just threw every all the shit out, right? And nothing that would that that's dumb, yeah. And just no, just no record of human history up to 2021 because right. we threw everything out as it you happened. That's, that's every 20 bullshit. years, we just wiped the slate clean every 20 years and just start over and shit. And it's just like, yeah, and it's um, it's it that that's insane, you know, to the point where you just have to just go and say, hey. Uh well hold on real quick. I'm sorry. Uh she getting ready to leave. Hold on, my fault. Okay. 
I got to check on uh Yeah, but uh once again um yeah, man, we that that's a a good point they have brought up cuz uh it's just certain music you are not going to bump in the in the hood. And I'm sorry, I don't give a fuck how much of a fan you are. You are not going to bump M, Eminem in the hood, like you said, on a hot sunny day with the fucking windows down and all that shit. You're not going to do it. Uh, Wu-Tang, certain shit, yeah. Um, Trying to see what else. Uh, Yeah, I don't agree with the Luda. Like, Luda shit just knocks. His shit is t- kind of timeless. Like, even now, his shit is uh, timeless as hell. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you just, it. I don't, the whole concept of just, oh, some shit came out in 2000. That's, you know, that that's weak. We should just leave it there. And I'm just like, you just didn't, you know, how many, how many, how much hits you're taking out, how many uh, classic moments, landmark moments that will be remembered forever. You, you just taking all that away because you think that something is old and it should be left where it's at, you know? Yeah. And, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's right. You know, I don't, yeah, it just kind of, and nobody think, else does that. Nobody else does that. Have you noticed that? No, no, we the only ones. Yeah, we don't like nobody. Like you know, I don't think if I'm thirty or something, and you know, and I'm whatever white or whatever, they're not gonna. If I turn on some Leonard Skinner or some Metallica, nobody's really gonna kind of look at you sideways. Like there might be some subsect of of you know people who probably would do that, but for the most part, they they have an appreciation for their their past art. Yeah, in all 100%. in all different forms. They they all just it's, it's like like inherently though, oh I'm sorry but oh but inherently they have it where it's like yeah they just don't really remember that you know and it, and that's just that's frustrating that's that's something I'm like we got to change that man we do that hey that's hey that's what I'm trying to do shit with Coach seventy three and and the content we create man just open people's minds up because because that's a perfect point you hit on we are the only people that that do that like why are you so disrespectful to our legends like w- just like you said so for example when i was younger when i was 25 and 30 i'm hanging out with my white friends that's how i got familiar with a lot of the the older shit because they was playing that shit and they, and we was young you know what i'm saying right. we young as fuck smoking they didn't have on have to have on the the right now, whatever time, whatever wave, whatever this year is, they was playing a lot of that, um, that old shit. Like you said, that's how I got familiar with uh, fucking Metallica and Pink Floyd and different shit like that. And right, it was right. like the shit was a lot of it was dope. You know, they they put me on to some shit and open up. It, 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 I I just think black people, we gotta like I said, this is our art form. I don't give a fuck how commercialized it is now. And how corporate, uh, you know, tends to run it and shit like that. This is our art form. All you young niggas, this is your daddy's shit. This is your granddaddy's shit. They created this shit. Black people created this shit. Niggas that was in the hood, on the block, struggling, broke. We created this shit. So the simple fact that you disrespect it like that really says a lot. Just fucking think about that shit. Now, exactly. outside of that, I get it. You don't have to like everything or feel everything. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying just the respect aspect still needs to um, be there. You know what I mean? It's just kind of, right. yeah, like like y'all shit, you know, when, when you know, the younger motherfuckers, y'all shit is going to be old one day and you're going to be a certain time, a certain age, and you're going to want to fuck with it because that was the shit that uh you were listening to and i and i do also take into consideration um even outside of the brainwashing and the black aspect of it still respecting i do understand that it's different levels of music fans you know you got at the top of the food chain you got niggas like me and you where 
I've been in love with the shit forever. Fucking connoisseur. I know this shit. You're you're the same way. Since your introduction, you love this shit. You you want to know about the the old shit, and you want to know about this artist and that artist. You you have a love for it. You know what I mean? Right. Then it's motherfuckers under us where, you know, they they fuck with music and they like it. They go to shows, blah blah blah. Um, but you know. It's not the biggest thing. They may not know every aspect of it or not even most aspect of it. They just like certain things. And then you got under that the third tier, which is kind of like what corporate America, uh, the record labels, the kind of that's the kind of fan that them, them niggas depend on to make right. their money. Because those are the, the that tier of fans is the motherfucker that whatever is put in front of you, whatever's pushed down your throat, whatever's on the radio, whatever is the hottest shit of the moment, that's all the fuck you know. You can't see nothing past that. You gonna like it. They gonna make your ass like it. You, it could be trash as fuck. You still gonna fuck with it because they gonna put it in a package to make it cool and you and you gonna fuck with it. You just saw so a drone. Now with things. Some shit from, uh, it could be 2022 and some shit that came out three months ago. Oh man, I ain't fucking with that. Just three months ago, nigga. Right. Let the yeah. music breathe, nigga. Damn. So it's, it's just so it's just basically drones, just just you know, yeah. robot programmed. Yeah. They, they just getting programmed. That's all that is. Yeah. So 100%. and that's a and that's and that's a shame because I don't that 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 sound that sound that sounds scary to me. You know, it is. That sound you know that don't even sound you know it, it to the point where. I've been in conversations with people about, you know, different type, you know, different songs, artists, whoever. And if it's for me or if it's not for me, I should say. And I say that n niggas look at me like, are you just saying that to be different? I'm like, why would I do that when right. I genuinely don't when I genuinely don't like it? If I genuinely don't like something right. that, 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 you know, and and that, you know, that's we need that. You need at least one or two people like, eh, it's not for me, you know, because then there's no, you know, there's no variety. There's no, you know, because then everybody can just that then it would, it would just become a formula. Oh, well, all I got to do is do this, this, this and that. And people will like it because they just like everybody says they agree with it and like it. Right. It would just be a pattern. And, you know, then you don't have it seems like you would your variety would die down. You wouldn't have any type of different aspects anything because everybody would start focusing you know everything would become singular so right. it, uh, that that just sounds scary to me that look that sounds like some 1984 shit it is e even though it's music that kind of thinking can be applied to just a lot of black people period that that level of thinking that that sheep mentality yeah this nigga said, right you you just you just saying that because you want to be different do you fucking hear that, nigga? Right. Be a sheep like us, nigga, and just fall in line and just like yeah, just fall in line and, like, and shut up. Yeah, right. just shut up <laughs> and listen to it. Microwave, you know the 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 blue block, whatever, whatever you know, cats is doing that I don't like. Shut up and listen to it. And if you ain't listening to it, it what's it's, what's wrong with him? Right. That's that's some BS. <laughs> yeah. Straight up, like what what are we doing? Yeah. So. And 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 that just you know is uh the anti intellectual you know intellectual kind of aspect you know everybody w just want to be real sir and even outside of music and hip hop just everybody just real surface level with everything now it's like how do you have all this access to this information the most greatest you know period in human history as far as information is concerned and you just want to be surface level with everything right exactly you don't want to you don't you don't want to go no deeper than you just you just cool with no it's, it's, it's cool right here i mean when you know you see you can it's like a hole you can see it's it's clearly way more just down there you're like oh, I'm, yeah up here it's cool it's, it's fine yeah no no and, and and that's it's a saying and it's real as hell they it's a saying that goes so you're only as old as your ability to process new information mm -hmm. and that's basically that. saying if you get to a point where 
you don't give a fuck about new information. You ain't trying to learn nothing else. You closed minded as hell. That's shutting your brain down mentally and making your ass older. You could be young. You could be a young motherfucker like that, or you could be an older motherfucker like that. How you get, uh, you get the older motherfuckers like, uh, like when I was working at wireless, you get the older motherfuckers that come in and they don't want to learn nothing new about technology. They don't want to learn how to use the phone. They just want you to fix the fix shit it. or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, look, person, you're on this earth for however long you're going to be on this earth. And the only thing that's guaranteed in this motherfucker <laughs> is change and death. So as long as yeah. you're moving along, the world's going to keep on moving and keep on moving. And if you're going to not even try to learn and just shut down, you're going to be left the fuck behind. They're going to be out here lost as fuck. Yeah. yeah. 1,000, 1,000 percent. 1,000 percent. Yes. Yeah. So you just wanted to just wanted to say that because, <laughs> you know, it's so it's crazy how much you can apply from hip hop and music to just life in general. Yeah. You know, so many, you know, and it's just like the concepts of that. And, yeah. you know, I just... I don't know, man. I just saw so much music out there and and so much different hip hop. And I'm just like, you know, it's almost overwhelming. I'm scared to try to, you know, it does scare you sometimes. But, you know, because it is so much outside of just mainstream hip hop. You got your mid-level hip hop, you know, you 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 push your T's and, you know, people like that, your big crits and, and, and those. You got your mid-grade hip hop that you know everybody you, you know you can go in between mainstream or not you got your completely underground your mf doom and your tech nine and all that other people you know stuff like that right. and you know it can be intimidating but that's the that's the beauty of it also to me yeah oh 100 you know because because you get it's so many different sounds sounds and styles and so many different ways that people can come and and and, and they can come to the mic with and just give you something that you I I, I would have never even thought about that or how they you know just it, all kinds of creativity all kinds of different beat patterns all kinds of different verses you know just to show how much people really dedicate their lives and how many hours in, of their life that they dedicate to this thing that we all love to just consume exactly. so it's and, yeah and before we get out of here I I want to you know, like I said, we've been speaking about, you know, what makes you a legend in hip hop, the criteria, our personal criteria, our personal definition, people that we feel are legends, uh, some, you know, the the mainstream, some a little bit against the grain. Um, but before we get out of here, I do want to touch on the niggas that are not legends, <laughs> a little bit of that. And that word is thrown around so heavy. And I, I'm going to say that um, as an older nigga, like a lot of people, like I see a lot of people on these shows and be doing different things on the podcast and stuff like that. And I feel like just because you are older or you've been around for a while, that does not deem you a legend, legend. if you ain't really done shit. You know what I mean? I feel like a one hit wonder nigga or a two hit wonder nigga. And that's all you've done. And you ain't really been around like that or been out here like that. That can't be that you can't be deemed a legend. A lot of people seem to do that with some of the older, older artists, because it's just I feel like they doing it out of a sense of like just respect. The simple Very fact respect. that you still here or whatever and you did have a hit at, at one you had a moment but you had a moment and that do, does count for some because a lot of motherfuckers don't even get to that moment but that right. still don't deem you a legend another thing on top of that it goes on the other spectrum of things when it comes to these rappers dying i've seen that a lot where a nigga be out five minutes do a little something and then he gets shot or die Man, that nigga was a legend. It, no, he wasn't. R.I.P. Bless the no. dead. Yeah, it's sad that our rappers are dying and getting shot like this. You know that shit need to change as well. Motherfuckers need to be smart, protect themselves, don't put themselves in certain situations. But R.I.P. Bless the dead. But just because you get smoked, that does not just automatically 
puts you in the legend category because you got shot. Not at all. And you you ain't you ain't done shit. And when I say that, I'm talking about motherfuckers like King Von once again from the shy. Rest in peace. Bro, Love his music. Yeah, good music. Yeah, music. I, I I was fucking with the music. I was like, his shit just because he was a real nigga. That, that motherfucker had just got. He only been out of jail a few years. Dirk put him on. You know what I mean? Uh, True I, definition I with the music. True but, definition of a of a doing what you say you do in your raps. True definition man, of that. In in 100%. every sense of the word. Yes, and I was fucking with the music, but unfortunately your shit got cut short not saying you couldn't have made it to that point but just because you got out of here earlier than what you should have that does not put you into the legend category people were saying the same thing uh even with even with nipsey even with like juice world um like with nipsey people he was on his way he was on his way yeah, yeah, but, yeah I, I don't, like, but I don't, I don't think he made it though. Yeah, you, like people tend to put that 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 legend status on him for the simple fact he was on his way. Slash, what we were talking about earlier, what he did outside of rap, his contributions, what he was doing with the business, he was building up uh, the tech community in California for the hood. So people tend to throw him into that legend because of shit he was doing outside of rap. Plus. He was kind of on the way, but that just, right. yeah, but it don't automatically, like I said, you got to have a criteria regardless. I got one for you. No, go I ahead. got one for you. Benny Siegel. Mm. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think huh. I, you could probably, you could probably put him in the street. You could probably put him in the street legend, but I, I yeah. look at, I look at, I look at a nigga like Benny Siegel and I like some of Benny Siegel's music and then I love them in state property and all that. But yeah. I feel like he was a lot of wasted potential. Bruh. I feel like he was Meek Mill before Meek Mill. Bruh. And Meek Mill and Meek Mill went the same route. I saw I thought I saw big, big things for Meek. And then he kind of just, you know, he he's made a decent career for himself, but I don't think he's nowhere near where he should have been. And just feel like a, a, it's a lot of wasted potential. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll say the difference between the two. Um, so beans was just, just like Jay, he says it all the time. Anytime, uh, you ask him about beans, beans was just so hood and so hot headed. Like you said, he, that opportunity fell into his lap. You at the, at that moment in time, when you was popping, you're in the hottest rap label in the game. You around the hottest artist in the game, but he he did he fucked up that opportunity. He could really beans is kind of blueprint for how niggas even move now, where these niggas cannot remove themselves from the game. Like history and all this shit ain't taught you niggas yet. You can't do both. You can't be yeah. that street nigga, street nigga, and still try to be that rap star the two formulas do not mix something's gonna fall short something's gonna be fucked up it, you, you can't do both and that was the epitome with beans he kept fucking up kept fucking up all the opportunities in the world the movies the records the state property clothing line you getting opportunities that niggas would kill for but you could not get your ass out them streets you had to you, you could not let that shit go and that's the thing that we you know, as rappers, as as the black youth, we have that thing where we got to prove that we are real nigga at all costs. We got to prove to the hood that we real at all costs. Fuck, I'm a I'm a nigga from the hood. I'm a real nigga. Never claim to be no big street time nigga or whatever. But guess what? Fuck that shit. No, nigga, it's not worth it. It it, it life is hard as fuck. It's hard as fuck for black people to get opportunities to get to a millionaire status, to be able to help and feed their family. You got to focus on that. Fuck them niggas in the hood. Fuck the hood. You ain't got shit to prove. The hood kills your ass. After you make it, 
And after you show them that you can really do it, what does the hood do? You go back the to hood, the hood yeah. and they don't give a fuck and they kill your ass and they jealous and they everything else. So what the fuck are you trying to prove? Who are you? Why are you trying to prove that to them? Who gives a fuck about what they think? It, the hood don't love you like like you think it do. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's but yeah, that's the hood. Love the hood. I put it like this: the hood love you until it don't. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. never know when that day gonna come. Yeah, you never know when that day gonna come. Cause then, cause when that day come, that might be the last day. Right. So. Yeah, man. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. But uh, yeah. So we just had to break it down for y'all. Uh, like I said, everybody got their own definition of what a legend is you know the criteria like i said we had to break ours down kind of cover what does constitute a legend what doesn't um and you know everything in between so hope y'all enjoyed it um you know we're gonna be back as usual uh quest convo with dev devious like i said we are the culture because we talk the culture because we are the culture and you know that's that man I, I we appreciate all the love appreciate y'all turning in appreciate y'all listening and we're gonna keep this shit going for sure for sure we appreciate y'all just keep bearing with us keep rocking with us we're gonna keep making this thing happen for y'all and we're gonna keep putting in that work and keep grinding until we get to where we need to be so you know we always count on that for sure definitely definitely without a doubt peace and love y'all we out all right peace y'all I'm gonna go, 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 I'm g